Today's spooky video, we're going to be having a look at the Morbid Enterprises, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger Syringe Glove. I picked up this glove where one would pick up a really cheap replica Freddy Krueger glove, and that's Spirit Halloween. I didn't find it actually in the store, but I, I did find it online, and I was surprised actually I couldn't get it in the store, so I had to order online and paid all these ridiculous shipping charges and all that good stuff, and I also had to pay for it in US dollars, so you can imagine the additional fees that were involved to get this. And uh, if you have picked up any of the Freddy Krueger gloves from these Halloween stores, it's about on par with what you would expect. It's a really ridiculous looking replica. And uh, well, I kind of already knew what I was getting it myself into when I when I ordered it. I knew it was pretty good. It was going to be a pretty cheap quality. And it is. Uh, I currently got it just on my little mannequin hand here. I don't really know sometimes why I use the mannequin hand because a lot of times these gloves just don't fit properly over top of the... So we'll just put the hand over there for the time being. And uh, here is the syringe glove. Now let me just kind of break down what we're looking at right here before this does break down on us. Now here we have the Freddy Krueger conventional glove. And of course like in the Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 The Dream Warriors, you've got Freddy Krueger fighting Terran and uh, proceeds then to whip out not only just his Freddy glove, but also his regular bared hand with syringes on the end. And the syringes were all in blue like this, probably to a little bit of a better quality than what this glove actually is. Now the glove does light up. That's something. It doesn't really look like it lights up in the movie. Obviously it's just, you know, they had to add a little bit something extra to it. So there is a light up option. It already has the batteries, so you don't have to worry about buying batteries right off the bat. And there's a little on and off switch. When you do eventually get this onto your hand, which would be just a feet all on its own, uh, you can then take the battery compartment and there's a little Velcro pouch here that you just open up and you tuck this on the inside. So if you ever just want to turn it on, you just turn it on and then just kind of tuck it underneath. It does add for a little extra bit of a problem because when you have it on your hand, you've got this big bulbous lump that's sticking out from your palm. It looks like you've just got this giant wart underneath uh, underneath the glove. But at least at the very least, there's something that you can you know, get stored away. It's not simply just going to be this very obnoxious dangling cord that's going to be hanging down on your arm. So let's talk about the quality here. Like this, this is pretty much what you would expect. You know, the the Ruby's gloves, depending on what you're buying, can be a little bit of a higher end, which has metal and stuff like to it. Um, I don't think I've ever picked up a glove from Morbid Enterprises, and I have to admit, like the quality, it's pre it's pretty bad. Um, I think when it was all said and done, when I eventually paid all the shipping and all the, all this overhead, I think the glove probably ended up costing me about $70. And, and if you were to pick this up, I think for $15, I think that would be about a, as much as you would want to spend for it. So the glove is a very cheap sort of, I don't even want to say felt, but it has a very similar feel to felt. It's stitched together as best as they could stitch this glove together. Um, you can fit it onto your hands. Well, actually, you know what? It might be a little easier for me to put it on my hand. Um, the package does claim it to be one size fits most. And I seem to fall within the most category because it fits my hand. Um, it doesn't... You always have the problem with the hinges. And uh, this glove is no exception. I mean, it's a little harder to move the fingers on each of the 
you know, the actual blades here. The biggest problem that I do have though with it is that you have visible wires. There's wires that are running from the on and off switch through each of the individual fingers. They should have probably put these in something protective because if you're gonna be moving your fingers back and forth, you're probably gonna fray that wire. And the moment that happens, the, these will stop functioning. So the quality of the glove is like a, like I said, it's a felt. There's not really anything overly exciting about it. Does it look like a garden glove? Absolutely not. It looks like a, like a cheap wardrobe glove. Um, it's not the greatest of material, but that's about, again, on par with what you would expect from it. The platings are all plastic. The rivets all appear to be plastic as well. They've sculpted as best they could some indication, but you know what? It kind of looks a little bit more like a tree than it does metal plating. And then they've put like the you know, little moldings on the end of the fingers, but I don't think that's fairly accurate to uh, Elm Street 3. I think that's a little bit more accurate to Dream Master Part 4, these moldings that are on the end. I don't even think this looks like it does in the movie from what I remember, but you've got this wood grain Who's saying that wood grain should be anywhere on this? It just doesn't look like a metal glove. It looks like it's supposed to be a plastic tree. Anyways, the fingers don't really move all that well. Can you like spread your fingers? Not really. Um, there's very little to no give on these. I mean, you know, you can move your fingers a little bit, but not much. Can you open and close your fingers? Sure, a little bit. This finger is, is probably the hardest one to move is this one here. I can move this finger, I can move this finger, and I can move somewhat this finger. This one right here, I don't think it's just for the fact that I've got, say, a bad finger. It just is not very easy to move it. So, glove is cheap. Plates are pretty rough. I mean, the paint doesn't even help. If the paint could have been done just a little bit better, I don't even know why. They, they always seem to go with a light glove. Um, they seem to have a, a struggle understanding what color the glove is in the movie because you always tend to get the like, light colored gloves. So the glove is the wrong color. The fabric is not the greatest of quality. It's again what you would expect to get from these sort of glove, uh, Halloween store sort of gloves. As we move to each of the individual syringes, this is sort of kind of where it gets really like disastrous. The bottom half does have like a like almost like a liquid gel in there. I mean, I would not want to break this open. I don't even know how toxic this stuff is inside, but it does look like there's some sort of gel or something in there. It also looks like there's something loose in there as well. So I don't, I don't know what, it almost looks like a cap. Who knows? Um, it may not even be gel. It may just be paint on the interior. I feel as if maybe it's closer to that. There's just like a, a paint interior so it's maybe not gel, it's just, just paint. And then the syringes. When I first got these out, I thought I could remove these. And I thought, silly me, I thought that there would be actually something that resembled a little bit more of a needle inside. But no, that, that's what you get. That's what you get. And you can see inside, I guess if it was gel, it would be leaking all over the place. So it's just paint on the inside. Uh, and then you've got these really, really crappy looking syringes. They're of a thin plastic, the type of plastic that I feel it could very easily break off. And the more, obviously, these break off, the less they're going to resemble a syringe. I mean, if you get right down to the stumps, they're not going to look like anything. So your Halloween night of trick-or-treating, I don't know how long these are going to last. But again, they're just really cheap, cheap plastic. Okay, okay, so we've got the little on and off button here. We're gonna flip it on, and you can see that there are lights on the inside, which I guess is that one thing that I thought was a cap, are these little tiny bulb lights. They pulsate, so at least you get something for your money. Did they really need to pulsate? Probably not, but it's a little something extra just to elevate an otherwise pretty crappy looking glove. Obviously, 
you're never going to really get a glove unless you get artists, you know, third-party companies that are producing a syringe Freddy glove. From a retail release standpoint, they obviously have to make a lot of trimmings. They got to trim back the, you know, the, the more dangerous th aspects of it. So what you're ultimately getting is, like I said, something like this. Is it a comfortable glove? No, it's not. Um, like the finger areas here, I find are just a little on the tight side. They say size fits most. It fits my hand, but it is, it's not the most comfortable of things in the finger areas. Um, even like when I'm moving it, yeah, it's just, it, it, it's not the most comfortable of things. And again, my biggest problem is that they've made very exposed wiring. I mean, it's luckily it's not like up to a power source. You're not going to electrocute yourself, but you move these fingers too much. Like right there, if I bend my finger, it's going to bend against the wire. This can only happen so many times before that wire starts wearing down. And if it wears too much, then light, then the power simply isn't going to go to that one syringe and it's going to lose the effect, whatever effect you think this may be accomplishing, it's going to lose the effect of actually having it light up. At least at night, if you're going to be going out trick-or-treating, you've got the added bonus of a light-up syringe. I don't think anybody looking at this is going to think that these are real syringes. I guess that is a good thing if you're going to be giving this to a kid. Would you ever want to give a Freddy Krueger glove that's got syringes on the end to a, a young child? Maybe you will if the kid loves Freddy Krueger, but I really do think this is not the greatest of gloves. And really, what would I expect from a Halloween store replica, you know, replica glove. It's it, it's pretty on the cheap side. Anyone looking to pick up a Freddy glove from a Spirit Halloween store, you pretty much will expect to get a cheap glove as a result of it. I know that's not 100% fair because Ruby's, to their credit, does produce good quality gloves if you're willing to spend for it. In fact, I saw some Ruby's gloves, Ruby's gloves in the Spirit Halloween store where I went to, and they had different categories as they do every single year. Sort of a basic class, a medium tier, and then a high grade deluxe version that has metal. The gloves still aren't the greatest. That's one thing Ruby's needs to work on. But at the very least, if you're willing to spend the money for it, you can get a good glove at, at a Halloween store. So that's not fair for me to say all the gloves that you get at Halloween stores are generally pretty cheap in quality. It just so happens that the majority of them are pretty cheap in quality. I suppose anyone also could have ventured to making one for themselves, simply getting a higher grade glove, like something like NECA was producing, and putting fake syringes, I have to stress this, fake syringes on the fingertips. You could probably come up with something yourself. There's also uh, artists out there that are producing replicas of the syringe fingers that do, of course, do a better job of looking like they did in the movie, not like this one right here. Consider this a burden that I bear that I pick these things up for you guys every single year so you guys can maybe see what to expect if you want to pick up a Freddy glove for yourself. I don't mind spending the little bit of extra to pick this up so that you guys can see the quality of the things that they're producing. I don't think Morbid Enterprises has done a great job on this. This is sort of on the same caliber as what we were getting from like the Ruby's low tier glove. You get the benefit of the light up syringes, but the glove quality is pretty bad and the plastic looks like a fake plastic tree and the syringes don't look anything like syringes. I get that they're supposed to look like you know, a safe enough alternative that a kid can wear this out and they're not going to be poking anybody's eyeballs out. But it's not the greatest of gloves and I know that the longevity of the wires aren't going to be something that maybe a year from now, if you're using this and wearing this repeatedly, I think those wires are likely going to get frayed and the light-up option is just going to cease to exist. And once the light-up option is gone, you're pretty much stuck with what you bought in the first place, a really cheap-looking glove replica. Avoid this one probably at all costs unless you're really a diehard fan of the syringe glove and then pick it up, but just know what you're picking up is not the greatest of quality. Today's spookerific review, we were having a look at the Morbid Enterprises. This was a nightmare on Elm Street, the Dream Warriors, syringe, Freddy Krueger replica glove, which is pretty crappy. I think what we will do, though, and I, by saying we, I mean me, uh, what I'd like to do is make me make a tradition out of this 
every single year, every single spooky spot, I'm going to do my best to try to pick up that year's releases of Freddy gloves, just to show you that some of the stuff that's out there currently in stores, if you're looking to pick it up for yourself. Um, I probably will likely go back and pick up some of the, all of the Ruby's gloves that I've also seen, so I can show you guys a comparison of some of the different things, the different releases that you can currently find in your stores. Uh, I will say, though, if you are looking to pick up this one for yourself, make sure you find it in the store. Don't pay the prices of conversion, the shipping, and all that other fun stuff of ordering it online. See if you can find it in the store, and then hopefully let this review be some guiding light as to whether this is worth picking up for you or if you want to pass altogether. Personally speaking, I would pass on this altogether. But then again, I was also the one that ordered it online and paid a lot more for it than really what I should have. This glove, at the very least, should have been about $25 and nothing more. Nothing more past $25 I would spend on this, this Morbid glove, which is made by Morbid Enterprises. Today's spooky spot, like I said, we were having a look at the Morbid Enterprises Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger syringe glove. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? More spookerific reviews are going to be coming up for the rest of Spottober. And like I said, maybe a tradition will, will come from this. I'll try to do my best to pick up some other Freddy Krueger gloves. And I'll try to do that every single year as well. So stay tuned for that. Also, make sure you swing by the homepage when you finish this video and see if there's any videos that you may have missed along the way with the amount of volume that I'm doing on a regular basis. Gosh darn it, there's probably a good chance that you may have missed out something along the way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do. I'll see you next time.